Hello, and welcome to today's exciting game of Name That Equilibrium. We've discussed so far a lot of different ways that particles can interact. For example, we've talked about photons hitting atoms to result in an excited atom. We'll call these photo excitations. We've talked about photons hitting atoms and knocking the, an electron off. We call those photo ionizations. We've talked about charged particles colliding with each other to generate some photons, a free emission. We've talked about two neutrals colliding with each other, or something like an electron hitting a neutral to produce an excited atom, and we call that collisional excitation. So these are all the fundamental processes that can contribute to an equilibrium. And of course, for every process, we have an inverse process. We can take an excited atom and go back to become a photon and a de-excited atom. We can have an ionization recombine to produce a neutral atom and a photon. We can have a photon strike a collection of charged particles and cause them to move faster. We call that inverse Bremsstrom or inverse free free emission. And we can have collisional de-excitation where an excited atom strikes another atom and de-excites it with the extra energy going into the kinetic energy of one of the contributing particles. So when we're talking about name that equilibrium, we're talking about the balance between these forward and inverse processes. All right, so let's have a shot at this. Question number one is in statistical equilibrium, what describes the ratio of states in a neutral atom? And the answer, that's right, it's the Boltzmann equation, which says that the number in an excited state, N2, compared to a lower state, N1, is going to be the ratio of their degeneracies, G2 over G1. That's the number of different equivalent representations of a given energy times the exponential e to the minus the energy difference between the two states over kt, where t describes the temperature of the atoms. Okay, question number two. Which processes contribute to statistical equilibrium? One possible answer is photo excitations, because the presence of photons can affect the ratio of excited to de-excited states. We also can have collisional excitation. So if we are colliding often with another particle, that can affect the ratio of states. How do we determine which of these is dominating our statistical equilibrium? Is it photo excitations or is it collisions? Well, to determine this, you need to compare the rates of excitation and de-excitation through collisions. And a quick rule of thumb is to compare the Einstein A coefficient for spontaneous decay, which is a time scale for a photo de-excitation, and to compare that to the rate of collisions, which is the average over the number density of colliders, which I'll just write NE here, times the cross-section for collision, times the relative velocities of the particles. And we say it's an average because there are different numbers of particles at each velocity here be integrating over some distribution of velocities, f of v. And what is f of v typically? Well, in kinetic equilibrium, or thermal equilibrium, it's a Maxwellian. Which brings us to number three. What, and maybe why, is it a Maxwellian? So first, the what. What is a Maxwellian? Well, it's a distribution described by f of v being m over 2 pi kt k halves times 4 pi v squared e to the minus 1 half mv squared over kt. That's what a Maxwellian is. Why do we have Maxwellians crop up? Well, in some ways, a Maxwellian is a special case of the Boltzmann equation for a case where you compute degeneracies by all the different ways you can have a velocity. So it's a surface of all the different velocities squared. So all the velocities that have the same energy times the probability of getting that much energy in a single particle. And then a normalization that depends a little bit on temperature that describes the occupancy of each velocity shell. And how do we get a Maxwellian? Well, we just need enough collisions to redistribute the energy between particles in some initial state until they achieve this distribution. So another answer to the question of why a Maxwellian is it's what happens when you have lots of collisions. Which of these processes are likely to contribute to a Maxwellian distribution? Well, obviously collisional excitations because we have direct collisions between particles. We have free free emissions, so collisions between particles there also are redistributing energy among them. So basically, Interactions between charged or neutral particles will redistribute energy into a Maxwellian distribution. All right, let's try another question. What equation governs photoionization equilibrium? The answer, 
the Saha equation, which states that the number density of ions times the number density of electrons, number density of neutrals, is equal to 2 times the partition function of ions as a function of temperature over the partition function of neutrals as a function of temperature times 2 pi mass of electron times kT over h squared all to the 3 halves power e to the minus chi over kT. So remember these partition functions are basically degeneracies for the ions and for the neutral atoms. So it's how many different ways are there to have a neutral atom and how many different ways are there for you to have an ion. If your ion is itself still an atom, then you'll have a, a range of electronic transitions available to you. Your neutral atom definitely has a range of excitations in the electronic transition available to you. And these are a function of temperature because the higher the temperature, the more excitations are available to you, and therefore the more different states you have for a given neutral or ion. Next we have a term that came about by setting our statistical equilibrium, and we see that it's weakly dependent on temperature here, as temperature to the three halves. And finally we have a term that reflects the binding energy, chi, relative to the energy floating around, kT. So that's the Saha equation. Now here you can see that the Saha equation is governing this lower process here. And since the Saha equation governs the number of ions and charged particles that will be floating around, it's something that you'll generally want to consider any time that you have charged particles interacting with each other, including with free-free emission. And free-free emission did not get close enough to be able to radiate off all of the binding energy as a photon to create a neutral. And the Saha equation is the complementary case to that that considers only interactions that come close enough to actually produce a bound neutral atom. All right, let's keep going here. So in the limit of many photons being absorbed and emitted by a medium, either by photo excitations and de-excitations, or through free-free interactions, what is the equilibrium spectrum that you achieve? The answer here, the black body or Planck spectrum, with a source function given by 2h nu cubed over c squared times 1 over e to the h nu over kt minus 1. This term right here is because photons are bosons, so this is the boson form of the Boltzmann exponential. And this front term describes the degeneracies, all the different ways to have a photon of a given momentum. So in a way, a black body or Planck spectrum is an equilibrium distribution of all photon states given some process for redistributing energies between photons. Which brings us maybe to another question. How many different temperatures are there? The answer here, three. You have a brightness temperature, which is the temperature that describes the photon distribution. You have the excitation temperature, which describes the ratio of internal energy states, for example, excited or de-excited atoms, or even the ratio of ions to neutrals. And finally, you have a kinetic temperature, which is the temperature distribution of velocities in your colliders. What process couples brightness temperature to excitation temperature? It's photoabsorption. What couples brightness temperature or photons to the kinetic energy? Well, that can also be photoabsorption via the Doppler shifting. It can also be the absorption of photons by moving charged particles, for example, in inverse free-free emission, inverse Bremsstrahlung. And what process couples kinetic temperatures with excitation temperatures? Well, those would be collisional excitation. Then we also have the redistribution of photons to different energies. It will require some external process, but the redistribution of the photons according to a specific temperature that is what the black body function describes. The redistribution of atoms with different energy states in equilibrium, which may require collisions or may require photoabsorptions, but what you end up achieving, the distribution of excitation levels, is the Boltzmann distribution. And the redistribution of energies among the particles, collisions, is a Maxwellian. What are the conditions for local thermodynamic equilibrium? The answer is when the brightness temperature, T sub B, is equal to the kinetic temperature, T sub K, is equal to the excited 
the excitation temperature, T sub x. In other words, the triangle we have over here, brightness temperature, kinetic temperature, and excitation temperature, needs to be tightly coupled on at least two different sides here. So we need at least two different strong processes to bring all of these temperatures into equilibrium with one another. A sub-question is what is the local in local thermodynamic equilibrium? What does that local mean? Well, it can mean spatially local, so you don't have to achieve the same equilibrium point in all of space. The value that it achieves can be specific to a spatial coordinate. It can also be local spectrally, meaning that you can be in equilibrium at one particular frequency, so for photons of a particular energy produced through some specific absorption or re-emission process, but you don't have to achieve the same equilibrium point at all frequencies. Maybe one last question would be to describe an equilibrium that relates different frequencies, so different spectral of your radiation. And a description of the answer there is bolometric equilibrium. So in bolometric equilibrium, you can have photons coming in at one particular energy, hitting, for example, dust. And all of the different photons coming in and hitting that dust, which could be at different energies, heat up that dust. The dust absorbs all of those different photons. And as it heats up, the photons produce infrared photons at perhaps a lower frequency and radiates off enough of those photons such that the radiated flux under the Stefan Boltzmann law, sigma t to the fourth, is equal to the integral of whatever radiation field at a higher frequency is coming in times the line profile function for absorbing a photon integrated over all solid angles and all frequencies. And you could imagine that the photons coming out of this obey some Planck function, but at some different temperature than what might describe distribution of photons coming in. So in bolometric equilibrium, the total energy is conserved, but that energy is being redistributed between different frequencies. All right, thanks for joining us for Name That Equilibrium, and hopefully this has helped put a bit of a finer point on all the different processes and distributions that are involved in achieving equilibrium states.